How you holding up there, Cutter? Seems like you're getting a knack for it. Trust me, when you get well versed in the art of ship breaking, it becomes a joy to show up to the yard each day. Ain't a trade like it. Dancing between the ribs of a ship, spitting heat, dose of doing with a ten ton panel, and taking a breather to gaze out at the rest of the human race buzzing in the distance. <laughs> Can you tell I miss it? Hey, it's all right. Helping you all get there as near as good. Ah, oh, dang it. I got corporate ringing me. Good luck out there, Cutter. Talk to you again soon. We wrap. Having the character logs is kind of nice just to humanize this game. That doesn't take too long either. Like some games just kind of chat your ears off. Other games are just kind of loosey-goosey. A little bit here and there is nice, because then I can just kind of go back to focusing on what I want to focus on, as opposed to anything else. Is that it? Yeah, we're good. I'm watching NPR's tracker. Current 7-day rates point to 50% mid-June, 70% in August. Are we talking uh, vaccination rate slash herd immunity? This sounds kind of vaguely right. I think it also depends on what part of the country you're in. I know I'm related to some people that uh, firmly think that, uh, that getting vaccinated or is a one-way trip to being part of the uh, the Games for Windows live crowd for life. High gain antenna. Well, at least this is a lot more interesting than last ship. Personally, I always kind of wish Microsoft had leaned into it. I know why they didn't, and it makes perfect sense, you know, why Microsoft would never joke about this sort of thing. But, like, how hilarious of a marketing scheme would that have been if they're like, Hey, you get a uh, free month of of uh, the Xbox Games Pass, uh, or Windows Games Pass, or whatever, uh, if you have, like, uh, verified proof that you're, you're vaccinated. I'd go for that shit, like, in a heartbeat. Yeah, herd immunity, if you include children who can't get it, probably not going to get to herd immunity for a while if it does. The biggest worry is always mutations, because if, if the virus mutates enough that we need to get a dose yearly, like the flu, uh, herd immunity is... is pretty much statistically impossible. I don't think COVID actually uh, mutates that fast. And the question is whether or not the, um, whether or not the vaccines actually cover it. Because if we're, if we're really lucky, the, uh, the vaccines more or less just keep people safe for, you know, a year or two or something like that. And if you get enough people vaccinated, then yeah, it just goes away. Uh, just because it can't spread anymore. Nope. Uh, it's still connected. Nope, oh, that's still connected. Really? Oh, yeah. Say I'm getting sloppy, but it's mostly I don't actually care. Let's see. Curious, though. If you're immune to it, wouldn't you still be a carrier? No. So, I mean, okay. You could technically carry it uh, from the perspective of, like, having something on your person. But generally, when you're immune to a disease, uh, the disease cannot use you as a breeding ground um, to spread. Most people that are infectious um, actively has, you know, are being used by the virus or the bacteria or whatever uh, disease it is. Um, they're being used as, as effectively like a a place to spread and propagate and make more of itself and, you know, whenever you exhale, you exhale more of the disease. And so if you're vaccinated, um, unless, unless you somehow manage to get it after the fact, uh, you will not be a, uh, you know, an actual carrier of the disease. And being vaccinated does not actually... So... Common misconception with vaccines, um, 
is that like you're getting a, a version of the disease to fight off and that you can somehow spread the di disease from there. Now, admittedly, I'm no expert on this. Uh, my dad is, and I could probably ask him to uh, just write out the full explanation for me because uh, he used to work on mostly other types of drug research, but um, infectious diseases was part of his purview. Um, but you're effectively getting the RNA of the antibodies-ish. I'm sure somebody can correct me and give a better version of it. But effectively, you're getting just kind of a dead version of the virus that your body uses as a blueprint to actually fight the, the real thing. But that said, even if you do get vaccinated, it's, uh, it's not a good idea to just say, like, I'm totally immune, I can do whatever I want, and, like, just, uh waltz around in flagrant disregard of wow that door was gonna want to say hi Valuable object processed. Uh, you don't want to just waltz around in flagrant disregard of what's going on because you know there's always the possibility that you do catch it uh, the main reason why being vaccinated is useful is uh, to keep you out of the hospital and keep things from getting, like, real bad. Yeah, I got my flu shot, so I'm gonna go drink from street puddles. I was gonna say go kiss strangers at bars. Uh, or specifically hang out in airports 24-7. Or go to a convention. Any convention. Pax, I'm calling you out. I have... I have got... I have barely gotten sick my adult... my entire adult life. And the only times I actually get sick are when I go to PAX. Because there's always some grubbins dude that uh, goes with a fever and spreads it to everybody. Con Plague is what it is. Got my tetanus shop. Time, time to eat a bowl of dirty nails. Yeah, it's like, vaccines help. Like, you'd absolutely be way worse off. Um, you'd be way, way worse off eating that bowl of nails without the shot than with it. But it's still not a good idea. Anytime I go to a convention, I feel like shit for the next three to four days. Yeah, I, I've I've had conventions lay me out for a month, even. Uh, what happened the the last time? Gosh, was it was it 2018? Um, I think it was 2018 specifically. Um, but there were, there was a period of time where Shell and I were trading fevers back and forth. Oh shoot, there's a panel in there. Uh, you know what? I don't care. It's a small panel. It's not worth anything. Yeah, I never gotten your flu shot for the same reason. But like, most people... Most people don't have the limitations that you do, so Object most people don't have a good excuse. Credit deposited. So, never ever take the like... You know, everybody should get vaxes, uh, vaccinated thing as like kind of a condemnation of the people that actually cannot. Let's see. At this point, don't you think people that are still in danger would know that in public people aren't careful anymore and keep their distance if they need to? Uh, yes and no, but, like, there's a lot of situations where you still can't keep your distance. Um, without, like, act- oh. Uh, let's just stop that. I guess I didn't cut this out. Um, oh, right, because each of these individual sides, uh, is, like, one long piece and I can't split them apart. Okay, is it loose now? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Uh was what was I on? Oh, right. We're gonna try and figure out how to remove the communications array. It just pops off. Where the hell's the bar oh, I'm looking the wrong direction. You don't get the flu shot anymore. Because you always get sick afterwards. Yeah, but like you still kinda wanna. Part of the reason why we even still have the flu is because so many people don't get vaccinated on it. Like, if everyone in the world actually got properly vaccinated against the flu uh, for just like a year, it'd pretty much go away for a very, very long time. But you would need everybody in on it. And the problem is like, for so many of these diseases, they just kind of disappear to some 
you know, kind of limited region in the limited region in the world, and you know, generally stays there for a while until somebody brings it back, and then kind of rinse repeat. But the biggest worry is is that mutations occur. The longer a disease exists, the more it will mutate, um, and change against like what people are immunized against. And that's the thing you want to worry about the most. Uh, so, at the start of the pandemic, I, I'm not sure how many people were really paying attention to the news. Hopefully a lot of people were. Um, but, Italy got hit really bad. And the main reason why Italy got hit bad was because it had a particularly infectious variant uh, that I believe is what's currently ripping through India. Um, and so, despite the fact that yeah, they didn't actually have uh, that big of a population or were particularly unsafe. They were getting absolutely wrecked. Um, and, you know, small mutations like that. Uh, if you get one that's even, like, just twice as deadly or twice as infectious, suddenly uh, you have all sorts of problems. Uh, especially if one of those variants is uh, bypasses the vaccine. Because that pretty much undoes any level of herd immunity that anybody has. And then we're right back at square one. Is this all? Yeah, this is all still interconnected. Okay. So I'm just gonna have to peek in through here. Can I actually jam myself through this space? No. It's actually really impressive how much the character can, like, squeeze through gaps in this game. If vaccinating all flu stems at once is way too much of a burden on the immune system and only effective for 6 to 12 months. Oh, absolutely! Uh, my point was more so that if everybody got vaccinated generally against the current strain, uh, it would die off actually fairly effectively because it wouldn't be spreading to people anymore. I haven't got the flu in four to five years. Yeah. But you never know. Then again, like, COVID, COVID actually uh, re bleh, resulted in considerably lower flu occurrences uh, because people actually gave a shit and masked up. Like, that's the other thing. If people actually got used to wearing masks when they're not feeling well, or just going to crowded places where they don't know who they're around, uh, we'd actually, like, kick a lot of major diseases to the curb. Warning. Fuel levels are low. Fuel supplies are available for purchase at the Master Jack. Because masks and stuff actually, like, work really well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, work really well, no matter how much people yell at me in the comments section about it. But yeah, as far as conventions go, I think I'm gonna buy one of those really fancy razor masks. Uh, the like really cool looking ones. Uh, as a like equal part vanity, and I will wear it to conventions. Look slightly, uh, slight, uh, looks slightly cyberpunk, uh, but hopefully not get really sick after going to PAX every year. Either the, either the Razor Mask or maybe the, uh, what was it, the Zuper Mask? Whatever Will I Am's, like, vanity mask is. Not that I actually really want to buy into that specific thing, but it's just like, you know what, I'll, I'll get a cool mask. I like the idea of everyone in conventions wearing masks. Yeah, just like, suddenly, suddenly gaming conventions become 50% uh, more cyberpunk, or 100% more cyberpunk. Like, I'd love that shit, that'd be so cool. There's... A secret antenna off the back. Let's see, do we have another? Nope. Salvage secured. Credits deposited.
But people who refuse to wear masks argue the flu is only down because hospitals are either under-reporting data. Anybody that does that just bugs me. But I, I think it's one of those that it kind of buys into the whole... The idea that you somehow have learned a secret truth that is hidden from society. Um, and, you know, the sad thing is, like, there are a lot of aspects to modern life that kind of fit within that... Uh, I'm not going to say that conceptualization, but, you know... Things that society is is kind of taught against our self interests, uh, and that a lot of people latch onto this idea of the um, you know. Your equipment durability is dropping. Keep an eye on it. You don't want to be dangling in the wind with busted tools. When you see it happening, head on back to the hab and use a repair kit to fix them up. Let's see. Yeah, the idea that we're being lied to for whatever reason. So, easiest example I can think of is that smoking uh, for years was touted as this, like, healthy thing. It wasn't. And even at the time, you know, these, these companies and health professionals knew, like, this is not... Salvage secured. Account credit uh, applied. You know, this is not healthy and good for people. But because it was profitable to lie about it, they lied about it for a while. And so I think there's kind of always been this, like, pervasive ment uh, cognition, I guess, of, like, uh, there's always kind of the, the secret truth that's just being hidden just out of reach. And so that's that's why the anti-vax movement gets so big, because you find a couple of people that can talk somewhat credibly about some kind of controversy and push it just enough. Uh, same thing with anti-masking or, you know, Salvage they're just hiding secured. the data. Account and the thing is, applied. like... For so many of these, like, weird conspiracy theories or, or wild ideas, there is that grain of th truth that is, uh, that, you know, these people work off of. So, like, vaccines, for example. Yeah, they get some stuff that you wouldn't want to, like, casually drink in them. Um, but it's perfectly safe, but a lot of these people look at the ingredients list of vaccines and they're like, Holy shit, no! It's like, it's fine. And, you know, usually they're too busy being mad about it instead of caring. Ship salvaged in full. People who are hard of hearing and deaf probably have the hardest time with masks, can't read lips. I, you don't generally... So, admittedly, I never uh, really messed with it, but sign language can absolutely be done with a mask on. Like, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, someone who works in digital security can't blame people for being paranoid. Kind of scary how vulnerable... Uh, vulnerable. Uh, technology can make us. Yeah. And it's like, the biggest problem is, I feel like uh, so much of it has to, or boils down to like, critical thinking skills are kind of low. Uh, and the internet has not helped that. That, you know, a lot of people uh, straight up cannot tell like, fact from fiction. Uh, Unless they're directly presented with the uh, the di dichotomy between both and somebody holding their hand through it. Uh, so, I guess not exactly in the same vein. I made a video a couple weeks ago about how uh, scammers keep trying to steal my channel. And I've received, I think, contacts from three different YouTubers uh, who fell for scams. And, like, not all of these are, are you know, dumb people that... Uh, then you don't, don't understand technology. Like, some of these people actually went to school for cyber cybersecurity and still got scammed and had no idea at first uh, because it's insidious. And it's kind of one of those where it's like, so many people, this stuff just goes way over their heads because they're not thinking about it. Um, I mean, I, I almost got caught by one until, you know, my instincts just caught in and it was just like, no, this is actually not good. And I had to, like, uh, I had to really investigate. I'd, a company had contacted me to do a sponsored video on Slormancer, which I was really excited for. Uh, this is height of, uh, beginning of the pandemic. Oh, shit. Why? Okay. Um. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it, because why would I? Why should I? 
you know, they they want me to do a sponsored video on Slormancer. But it was just a little sketchy, and I wasn't quite sure why at first. And then eventually I looked in, into it and talked to the developers specifically, and they're like, yeah, no, we didn't contact you. We don't know who this person is. And it's like, oh, yeah, these, this person is not real and is just trying to... Um, is trying to, like, scam me and take my channel. And usually, yeah, yeah, the Uniswap news. It's not always Uniswap news. It's, honestly, I think recently it's been a lot of Dogecoin for unsurprising reasons. All right. Got some upgrades. Yeah, you can use ZNX to handwalk, by the way. Yeah. Ooh, hello. Reactors. Most dangerous part of ship breaking. But you got this. Continue when you're ready, Cutter. Huh. You've encountered at least three people who've asked me to lower my mask so they could read my lips. Interesting. I guess I went to a college that um, had a very large... Uh, well, I mean, they had like a huge deaf program and... Uh, and specifically catered to deaf people. And I don't remember lip reading being a big part of communication with them. It was very much sign language. But I also was not that deep into the culture or the program, so I only have surface level knowledge of it. So I guess I can kind of understand it. Okay, anyway. Hey, Cutter. Oh, you're going to love this one. I know you've gotten pretty used to the mackerels, but have you seen one of them javelins? Those are some serious ships. Really shows... Oh, this looks cool. You're getting a grip on things that, uh, that were clear and new for these. First one is a refuel javelin. These are Beasley, I'm telling you. Needless to say, lots of fuel hazards in there. These will be more challenging to take apart, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it right quick. Most of the javs have their hull pieces threaded up like a string of pearls. Looking forward to seeing how you'll tackle them. I'm looking forward to trying this. This looks really cool, though. With access to level four, uh, hazard level 4, Linked Selvage welcomes you to the ranks of potential high earners. The extraction of reactors from ships is one of the most valuable duties our employees can perform. We expect the utmost care when engaging with the variety of reactor setups that you will encounter. Retrieval of an intact reactor is your highest priority during every salvage operation. It is advised to clear a district path to the barge for safest extraction. Reactors will become unstable once removed from their protective housing and can cause severe damage to surrounding objects. Failure to extract a reactor safely is also failure to comply with extracted performance standards. Please ensure you talk to your su supervisor if you consider your ability to safely extract a reactor a risk factor. We, And, uh, we now have access to this. G'day, Cutter. What if I told you I got a new ship coming in for you? You're ranking up, so I'm tossing a new ship clearance your way. We've gotten to know the civilian cargo ships, and got those down for sure. But how about you try your skills on some of the industrial cargo ships? Can you can get a touch hairy there with industrial-grade hazards, big old fuel barrels and such. Also usually built for some pretty dense materials that are heavier to move around. We got this, though. Can't wait for you to try them out. Cool. Alright. Equipment. Grapple. So we've unlocked range. I'll take it, but what I really want is force. Oh, I don't have enough LT. Well, shoot. Uh, let's see. Not that that's actually really that expensive. Alright. Start training. Why?
Okay. I guess we'll just do this the right way. I was going to get cheeky and try and just cut my way in. Oh, this is one of the industrial class suckers. I should probably use this a little bit more often to identify airlocks. I'm usually kind of lazy just because parsing what's on my, my visor is annoying. Luckily, reactors are pretty easy to deal with here. Hmm. In retrospect, maybe I should, bait it, should have paid attention to what the computer terminal has. I don't know if there's like a safety feature that I gotta care about or anything like that. Salvage secured. Account S credit. None applied. of this straight up matters. Uh, can I just remove this? I love the music. Warning. Electrical damage. Well, congrats, Cutter. Eh. You're certainly picking this up faster than I did back in the day. Okay, I'll leave you to it until you get to the next rank. Oh. I guess I just have a free ship ship to rip through. Well, free ship. Guess I'm already here. Oh, that's fine. Bounce the reactor off of my face. Look, I can take it. Okay. Let's just rip through these things. I think the thing I'm looking forward to the most when it comes to, like, getting back to normal. Not that there's much normal. Oh, shit, this is... This would explain some things. Wonder why I couldn't get the thruster. And now I understand. So, when are you going to be playing Resident Evil? Uh, not tonight. We started playing it the other day. Um, but Shell is sick, probably with allergies, and so we don't, uh, let's see, we won't be playing, I think, anything together for a couple of days. I mean a couple of, like, like a solo stream of Pokemon Snap and a couple other things. We'll see, though. Like, I, I'm definitely not feeling my greatest either. Oh, that was just this starting to fly away. Why did that fly away so dang much? Okay, well, on the plus side, that makes getting the fuel tanks off really easy. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Okay, is there even anything else on this? Nope. In you go! Perfect. Wow. We, uh, two shreds, you say? We kind of shifted this thing around pretty hard. I can't wait till I can actually charge this. Uh, let's get my life a lot easier. Okay. Eh. Valuable object process. Credits deposited. Used to use a tether to take those down, but I don't think I need to here. Offers warm blanket and a cup of hot soup. Yeah, speaking of, uh, so salvage games observed. I'm not going to say I tend to be the uh, the caretaker between the two of us when we're sick. Uh but today, uh, I woke up early. I usually... Well, I wouldn't say I woke up early. Uh, I've been snoring a little bit late. Uh, a little bit more. I hate it, too, because it means I wake up with a really sore throat. Um, but, uh, so Shell woke me up and was like, You're snoring, and I'm like, It's fair, and if I go back to sleep, I'm gonna go back to snoring, and it's gonna be awful, and she's gonna hate me, and she's not feeling feeling well anyway, so I'll just get up. And so it was like, alright, 
How much soup do we have? Because I know Shell's gonna feel garbage, and the answer was, uh... Nope. <laughs> totally out of soup. So my mission this morning was just get soup. And I have, like, ten cans. I really should probably keep a much larger stock of soup around, just because. You know, you never know when you're gonna get sick. And it's not great having to go shopping when you're not feeling well. Uh, but honestly, like, I found modern, like, delivery options to actually be really nice. Prior to lockdown, I pretty much never would have even considered ordering groceries, let alone doing, like, uh, curbside pickup. And nowadays, I'm just like, holy shit, this is so nice. Just wish they treated their employees better. Permission, should you choose to accept it as soup? Yeah, I guess kind of, not exactly in that same vein, but, uh... Other thing I was not expecting to do, I've gone pretty much full vegetarian. I eat meat occasionally. I had a buffalo chicken pizza the other day, but that was like the only meat I think I've had all month. Um, and we've even like switched over to a lot of meat alternatives, so we've got meat alternative hot dogs that are honestly just kind of okay at best, but it's still just like, oh, this is kind of a neat novelty all the same. Um, but... Unfortunately, one thing we've really dropped off on, and for those of you that know me, uh, this is going to sound like heresy, but, uh, like, we pretty much haven't used our crockpot that much. Holy shit, look at that cut! I got one of the ones back here. I didn't even know that was possible. Um, but yeah, so I haven't crockpotted, like, anything in a while. And so... One thing I want to focus on uh, at some point sooner, that was bright, uh, sooner than later, is figure out how to make some like really hearty vegetarian uh, stews to put in my crock pot. Uh, let's see. That battle chef. I really hope they make a second Battle Chef Brigade. I don't think they actually made enough money for it, but gosh, that would be so cool. That game just had a nice style to it. Kind of in the same vein as, like, Hard Space Shapebreaker of game that no one else will ever make. Admittedly, it, was, it wasn't really much of a cooking game. Okay, did get it. It wasn't actually that much of a cooking game. It was much more of a, um... It was much more of just like a match three platforming action RPG. Uh, let's see. But like, it was fun and it just had a nice style. And like, I'd love to play more of that if I could. Ever since I moved out on my own, I started buying these two things just in case. A giant box of ramen packs and a case of assorted Chef Boyardee cans. Uh, I do that, but with rice, barley, bouillon, um, and beans. Uh, I'm not much of a cook. Not necessarily because I just like cooking, but just because, like, I don't have time for it. Um, ooh, we should probably get this before I start just cutting errantly in the area. Um, but, so, I don't, I don't cook much. Mainly just because, yeah. Streaming, YouTubing, and everything associated takes a tremendous amount of time on my end. Uh, but the one thing I do make is chili. And I make a really good pot of chili. Ruster's damaged. Oh, I see. Um. And, like, when I make a pot of chili, it feeds me and somewhat shell for, like, a week, week and a half, depending on how much I make. Um. And so I, I will specifically just make a giant bowl of chili uh, whenever we're starting to run out of groceries. And that's just my, like, uh, that's just my, my survival food. And so, yeah, going into that first lockdown when everybody was panicked buying groceries, I think we ate, like, three pots of chili in the first month just because... Yeah, it was pretty hard to get anything else. Project accepted for processing. Credit deposited. 
Let's see, vegetarian chicken or beef chili. I mean, it's super flexible, but I specifically do... Um, is it's uh, three cans of beans, a big can of tomatoes, uh, some kind of grain, be it rice. Um, let's see. Be it rice, uh, barley. Barley is actually shockingly good as a uh, as a grain for chili. Though I've I've never ever seen anybody else use it as such. Um, let's just scoot through. Uh, let's see, spices galore. I like cumin and uh, Cajun spicing is actually really good in the chili. I'm trying to think of if there's any other ingredients. I mean, honestly, I just kind of throw in whatever. I'll often use it to get rid of like old rice or uh, you can use it to get rid of old meat. Though, obviously, we, we don't keep meat around, so it doesn't matter. It works well enough with uh, like textured vegetable protein. Uh, and that's usually what I use. But I've also used, like, Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger and a couple other things. Chili powder? I... somewhat. I find chili powder kind of de deadens the flavor. Uh, but that's just because I'm not much of a spice person. I found, uh... I found Cajun to be slightly less spicy and a little bit more flavorful. Add a nice tang to it. So I've switched away from... Uh, chili cayenne and paprika in favor of just a... a pure... Uh... Actually, sure. Why is tether on that one? We only got three left, so I should probably save them. Uh, let's see. Okay. We were talking about snor uh, snoring a little bit, or somebody was asking about snoring. Do I wake myself up when I snore? Nope. I don't even like. I will be awake, but just on the edge of sleep, and apparently be snoring, and I I have no idea. Shell's pretty sensitive to noises, though, so there's a very real possibility I'm not snoring that loudly. But it's enough to, you know, wake her up and set her off. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. I think so much of it has to do with just the fact that yeah, I've got a really small nose, which does not help me. Salvage secured. That's in Slavic, so for me, chili is much uh, is fairly different. Paprika, potatoes, and chopped steak. I've I've done potatoes in the past. The main reason why I don't generally do potatoes uh, is because it takes more effort to prep, and I'm lazy. Because most of the ingredients, uh, from my perspective, are just straight from can to pot. Uh, to mouth within like 20 minutes and potatoes potatoes definitely add a substantial amount of time to prep they're worth it but I, I don't know I like my meals to be fairly quick do you find yourself uh, waking up very easily nope not at all I'm a very heavy sleeper once I get going once I'm awake, I usually stay awake. I think just because um, I've always had issues with insomnia. I'm not going to say it's issues with insomnia, but it's very easy for me to wake up and then just immediately uh, immediately start thinking about like, okay, this is what I need to do today. Uh, this is things I'm working on, uh, script writing and so on and so forth. And so it's like... I'd like to be a heavier sleeper, but it's more of just kind of like... It takes a little while to fall asleep. Uh, and if, if like, I've woken up for the day, I'm just up. So that's what happened to me today. Woke up earlier than usual. Um, and just, there was no way I was going to go back to sleep. But comparatively, Shell is an incredibly light sleeper. And I think that's problematic. Okay. We just keep ripping everything out? Yeah. Watch me not make money off of this. No, I should. 
If there's a uh, if there's a meter at the top, I should be getting a reward. I realize this is the reactor uh, tutorial, and it's like, oh yeah, it'd be pretty sad if I don't actually get anything cool out of this. I still kind of wish there was a grab trap in this game that you could make. Just put it in the center of a room and and uh, effectively lets you katamari ball uh, anything that you loosen up. So all of these little storage bays, or storage bins, I just, uh, have, like, a giant cluster of them, wrap a net, net around, uh, and then carry them out as one big, uh. Salvage secured. Well, that's annoying. As you all are aware, the game is dead. I'm not sure what, what that's going to do. We just crossed level 3. But I don't know if it saves on me. Ah, that's a flow breaker. Oh. Please don't reset me at the beginning of the reactor tutorial. Because I don't think I'm going to want to do that. Yeah, it might, it might just be time for Infinitoad. Especially because I'm losing my voice a bit. Let's see if it just continues where I left off. It is still early access. Like, this is version 0.4.0. So, like, I'm not too bo bothered. Okay. Oh. That's interesting. I can keep the uh, drain on and off. So where is it going to drop me? I think it's time for you to learn about uh. the load of any ship. Reactors. Most dangerous part of ship breaking. But you got it. Yep, it's training. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs>